Well, it's a very good evening to you all as you listen in to this uh, midweek devotion, uh, which is coming to you from uh, Northside Community Church here in Harare. And so thank you very much for joining us. Uh, last Sunday, we finished off the preaching which we have been doing on the book of Amos. And uh, we were studying the whole of chapter 9. That's all the verses 1 to 15. And so it was not a summary of the series, but in fact the uh, chapter itself does bring the series, which was called God's Justice and Mercy, uh, to a conclusion. So justice and mercy are both attributes of God, but in, uh, they are opposites, and so it's difficult to understand how he can be both just and merciful. And in the first uh, eight chapters of Amos, we have seen a lot about God's justice and his requirements to, for Israel to keep their side of the covenant um, that they enjoy with him as his chosen people. But uh, sin, and that's uh, the sin of their sin, and also the sin of the nations around them had to be dealt with. And so far in Amos, there have only been very occasional glimpses of uh, God's mercy. But uh, with regard to justice, I think it's important to uh, understand that the first objective of God's justice or his discipline is restoration and that is even for his chosen people of the covenant relationship you know that the destruction which is often prophesized and which we've been seeing in Amos is a last resort so the first 10 uh, verses in chapter 9 continue in the same vein, or if anything, even more so. You know, this time we're looking at uh, the fifth vision, and that is of God himself pronouncing and bringing justice on the evil and those uh, involved in the evil in Israel. You know, no one is exempt, not because of their covenant relationship, nor their status in society. No one will be spared. No one can run away or hide from it. And so this time the destruction is total. But uh, in verse 8, it does say, Surely the eyes of the Sovereign Lord are on the sinful kingdom. Now the Sovereign Lord sees and he knows everyone. He exercises authority over everything. And there are some who will be saved. And so there is mercy, but it is in a way that uh, justice is still satisfied. So from verse 11 onwards, we see God's mercy. He continues to speak uh, and reaffirms his promise that David's line will continue. The house of Jacob will not be totally destroyed. There is a remnant and the remnant will in fact thrive to the extent that the picture is almost that of Eden. There's a garden with fruit, there's sowing and reaping of harvests and rebuilding of cities. So all of this, these words were spoken in about 750 BC. And we live now with hindsight and knowing much more of the story. And we know 
that Jesus and the cross uh, are how God's justice was uh, meted out and satisfied in order that his mercy could be given. Now God's justice requires that sin is punished. His mercy is that he gave Jesus, his only son, to be punished instead of us. To pay the price for our sin and he redeemed us. And so thus on the cross his justice and mercy are reconciled. And in verse 12 mentions all the nations that bear my name. This is an indication of the inclusiveness, inclusiveness of God's mercy. You know, his desire is that none should be lost, that everyone should be saved. And we, as we sit here in Zimbabwe, we are beneficiaries of this inclusiveness. You know, and as we as, as we close, um, you know, throughout the book, we have seen much of God, because Amos was only proclaiming what he was told to. And so these words we are, have been um, listening to are of the Sovereign Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Lord God Almighty, and the Lord, in capital letters, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts. But also in applying the message of Amos in our lives, we should note two practical things. In the first, Amos was a very simple man, a shepherd, yet the Lord used him. So Amos demonstrated, he demonstrated obedience, courage, a willingness to stand up and be counted, and a willingness to go wherever the Lord sent him. You know, he had to go way out of his compass, uh, out of his comfort zone. And so, we should be all of those as well. And then the second thing, you know, the, the sins of Israel were syncretism, which is the mixing of other religions with Christianity. That they were playing at a religion, they were doing the right things and looking good, but then they were living uh, double standards. They were oppressing the poor, they were defeating the cause of justice. And so this sounds very much uh, what we see happening in our time. And so we must guard uh, ourselves against these things and make sure that we are not doing them. It's important that we apply the lessons we hear in the way we live our lives. So I will just uh, pray for us now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and especially for this book of Amos which we have been studying. Thank you that we live in a place, in a country, where we are free to do so. We also thank you that we live in a time where we have people to teach us and also resources which we can access, which are so helpful to us in studying and in knowing you. And so as we have looked at Amos, it's very relevant to our lives in Zimbabwe. There are messages to us as a nation, to us as your church, 
and also to each one of us personally. As those who bear your name, we have a responsibility to be salt and light in our nation. Each one of us can make a difference. You have good works set apart for every one of us. At the same time, we know that without you, we can do, do nothing. So we, Lord, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us and that your will will be done here on earth. Thank you, Father. Right, thank you. Just a reminder that we start our Advent series uh, next Sunday, so we can look forward to that. You know, and the series is Emmanuel, God with us. And then there are the other events on our Christmas program. Just uh, note that they start earlier than usual this year. They've all been advertised. Uh, so take part in those and invite friends to be with you. And then also just to say that we are going to take a break from these uh, midweek devotions um, for December. And then we will pick them up again um, in um, early January. So do we just thank you all, all of those who do join us for them. And perhaps just as we go into this, this uh, Christmas season, try not to get caught up in the busyness and the frantic rush which goes with it. You know, one suggestion uh, for the month of December is to read through the 24 chapters of Luke. Uh, that's one chapter of Luke's Gospel. Uh, one chapter a day in preparation for Christmas Day on the 25th. So, God bless. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in church on Sunday. Good night.